I'd like to just talk a little bit about the numbers because a person living with diabetes is bombarded with numbers from all avenues. So my role as a credentialed diabetes educator is to try and help them understand what those numbers mean so that they can then use those numbers to make choices that are going to help them have a, a good quality of life on a daily basis but also reduce their risk of complications occurring in the future and we know that the complications in a lot of cases are preventable so I think it's a it's my role to bring that message across so that people are able to manage their diabetes rather than the diabetes manage them. In particular we talk a lot about the HbA1c and that's a three month blood test that a person with diabetes has and that gives an average reading of what their blood glucose have, levels have been over the last two to three months. As a general rule, um, a level of 7% or below or these days we've got a new unit of measurement and that's 53 millimoles per mole of of blood, that indicates the, a reduced risk of developing complications. So that's often the test that the doctor will base any changes in medication or management upon. Other tests are the daily readings, the blood glucose levels that the person will do themselves at home or wherever they may be at work, often in the workplace, and that's telling that person what their blood glucose level is at that particular time. So it's a, it's a a reading from that very moment as opposed to the average of three months. But then there's also the cholesterol and the blood pressure which we know are important aspects of management of diabetes um, and knowing what those numbers can mean. A person with diabetes needs to know if their number is above target level as the risk of long-term complications increase and it's an opportunity to improve the situation. So I often um, will encourage a person with diabetes to talk to their doctor, have a chat to their doctor about what are those numbers indicating in terms of my management and my health. So that's something else that I can work with them. The general guidelines for somebody with type 2 diabetes are to have a blood glucose reading of between 6 to 8 fasting, so before a meal, and between 6 and 10, two hours after a meal. But I must stress they're, they're general guidelines and it's really important that the person with diabetes talks to their own doctor to find out what's their target range for themselves because everyone's different, everyone has different circumstances, their medications are different, their social situations are different. So it can vary from person to person. In those with type 1 diabetes, it may be a little bit lower, but again, we would be um, directing the person to talk to their GP or their specialist doctor about what's the range for them as an individual. Blood pressure is another important aspect of management and to have that under control is also a, a way of reducing risk for developing complications. And again, as a general guideline for those with diabetes, blood pressure is um, less than or equal to 130 over 80. Now, what that actually means for the person with diabetes may not be uh, as relevant for them to understand what those figures are, but they, it's important that they know where they sit on that spectrum and whether any changes need to be made. And that's something that I can help them with or their GP can help them with. Another area or another numbers that can occur and be thrown out are cholesterol levels. And we often know that cholesterol and blood pressure are related or raised cholesterol and blood pressure are related to some complications that can occur. So keeping them within a, a target range is also very important. So cholesterol, total cholesterol, for somebody with diabetes, we aim to have it under four millimoles. We can help somebody live a life less complicated with diabetes and to lead a good quality of life so that they can go on and do all those things that they're wanting to do in the future.